Howdy, this is Tubal Kane again. And in a recent video, I showed you uh, purchasing this lathe at a, a estate auction. And I said I was going to uh, cover this and uh, talk a little bit about it, but that isn't even what this video is about, and that'll be another video. But uh, this uh, Logan lathe here, 10 inch, uh, is uh, unusual in only one feature, and that is that when I got it home, I discovered of all things that the original oil dauber was still in the tailstock. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make these uh, with the turret lathe. I'm going to set up a little turret lathe and uh, talk about that and uh, uh, different operations we're going to do on that. And this is a little bit different than the other video that I did on making oil daubers. Even though nobody will need to do this you might find some of the operations interesting. I made another video last year uh, which was Machine Shop Tips 119 on making an oil dauber for the South Bend lathe and that was about ball turning. You can go back and look at that if you haven't seen it but this will be a similar video except that the style of this dauber is slightly different than the South Bend's in that it is just a simple turning with a ball and then there's a pin driven into it, a hole drilled and a pin driven into it rather than turning that down. Again, the purpose of an oil dauber, if uh, you don't know what it is, is uh, to put oil in, from this little reservoir onto a dead center. Now, if you're using a ball bearing center, of course, we don't need to do that. But uh, some of you purists out there want an oil dauber and uh, you want it to be fairly authentic. But this is how to make one. And uh, normally in that uh, reservoir, we keep this CMD extreme pressure lubricant or in the olden days he used white lead but I don't think you can get it anymore but that was the reservoir and you could just take a little of that and dab it on and the purpose of that was that it was always handy and ready to use because that's something you had to freshen up from time to time during your uh, turning process as the uh, center got hot and uh, the oil dried out. The oil dauber could be made on this Logan lathe for its own tailstock or any other lathe for that matter but I'm going to use the Logan lathe that I have in the basement because I have some uh, tooling for that that uh, turns it into somewhat of a turret lathe and I want to show you how to set that up or how I set that up and how that would typically be done uh, in industry years ago. Now if they had a desire to make these which they don't anymore they could be made in a matter of seconds uh, on a CNC machine but uh, remember my technology is always old technology. See you in the basement momentarily. I'm down in the basement shop now and this is the dauber that I made for the South Bend lathe and that's what the originals pretty much looked like with the tapered uh, pin on them and it's all one piece. This again is the one I just showed you out in the other shop the original one and uh, this is the one that I made using roll pins. Now this used a grooved pin because I don't think they had invented the roll pin and this lay this from 1947 I think. But uh, this is what it looks like and we're going to make a setup in the Logan lathe for that. Now I have already made the form tool and that is very similar to another video that I did that uh, was uh, tips 118 making a form tool and I'm not going to show that again that uh, was made off camera and it is not the same one used to make this but it's very similar very very similar but this uh, is a uh, larger ball this is 5 16 rod and a 5 16 ball this was 3 8 so there's a little bit of difference so I couldn't use the same tool and I was trying to keep the dimension the same and uh, these are roll pins spring pins, uh, tension pins, there's other names for them and you can get those at any hardware store and in this particular one I'm using three quarter inch long, eighth by three quarter. Turret lathes are widely or were widely used in industry for mass production and now all, all of this would be automated of course but this is the way it was done and when I worked in Bloomington uh, in the 60's we had Logan lathes uh, set up as turret lathes and they came from the factory that way and there were many many of them and they were the size of the one I just showed you out in the garage that I start this video with a, a 10 inch but they had uh, bed turrets on them uh, the principle is the same but this is an attachment 
and I believe that his factory, at least I'm talking about what's here right now, this was a, was a factory but it looked like somebody cobbled up something on here and this came with this lathe when I bought it. However, just a few minutes ago I took the regular tailstock quill out and install that one that I had in storage and this turret here also is an attachment and that is uh, something that also came with this lathe but I already had one and you can buy those anywhere actually I just aired uh, the, the tailstock turret I just showed you on the machine uh, was one I already owned for some time this is the one that came with the Logan lathe and I am not using it but it's very similar it's just a number two Morse taper that goes into the quill and we have a six station uh, turret there and you can use two of them or all of them. And I, in my case I'll be using uh, just uh, two and to rotate it you push down on this lever and just click it into the new position. On a regular turret lathe you back up the entire bed with a big a crank wheel and it automatically indexes which is very dangerous if you have your fingers in the way so you also want to keep your fingers back away from this when it uh, rotates and on auto automatic machines that's going to be uh, real dangerous but usually those machines have a cover on them but that is the uh, tailstock turret back to the lathe now you can see that this attachment here allows you to very quickly move the work in and out Again, on a large turret lathe, when you come all the way back, this would rotate, and there would be a separate stop for each one of these stations, but there are no stops for this type of attachment. And I believe you can get this in a number three Morse taper, too. I, I think they still make these, but there's probably all kinds of them on the Internet uh, for um, used ones. I already installed one of the daubers in this one. Turning my attention real quickly here to the uh, tool post turret, and this is a little Enco turret, and that came with this lathe also, and I hadn't used it until today. And it has four stations, so you can put four tools in here one, two, three, and four. But if I'm, I, of course, am only going to use uh, the form tool and the cutoff tool. And to rotate this, you merely loosen that. Turn it to the next station, tighten it, and it's ready to go. So it's set on the form tool right now. The form tool is made of tool steel, as you can see. That produces the ball and gives the work the form. And that's really all I'm going to say about this. So everything is tapered here so it will cut. And I used uh, precision ground uh, a tool steel for that quarter inch thick on most turret lathes you're going to see that they use collets although I have seen them with chucks also but with a collet you can change uh, uh, the work or feed the work through the collet tube so quickly and usually it's done with a, an air feed but in this case it'll be by hand but I went ahead and I set this up with this uh, collet and uh, I ran into an interference so I'm not going to use this I'm going to use a chuck and originally when I bought this lathe uh, it came with the lever operated uh, uh, collet attachment that's really what is used because you don't have to turn the lathe off to feed it in uh, typically but I will have to turn it off here now here's the reason that I'm not using the collet attachment this lathe was probably sold originally without the quick change gearbox and someone at some time had added that. Now the reason I know that is because I have the extra gears and the extra lead screw that would originally have gone on here and also you can see that they're different colors. Well, with this uh, gearbox in place there was an interference. That is I had no room here to put my carriage stop and the hand wheel came right up against and touched the gearbox before I could get the tool close enough to the work. So I had to scrub that and uh, go ahead with a chuck and that will serve uh, the purpose just fine for this demonstration but it would have been a little slicker if I would have had the lever operated uh, collet attachment and stops all set up. 
And here's a production uh, type carriage stop that came with this. Three stops came with this, but I never have used this, but I wanted to use this for the demonstration. This would have come off, this would have been mounted onto the bed, and there's three stops here. So you could have both of those up and uh, make one cut up to this stop, and then your next operation up to this stop, and then your third operation up to this stop. So that would have been pretty slick. And that is made by Logan because I've seen it in the catalog. And if you're interested in this lathe, this is the video uh, Tips 111 where I buy this lathe and I show off all the attachments that came with it. And there are yet a few other attachments. Uh, there is a uh, cross slide that would be lever operated that I'm not going to use because it didn't come with a gib. Otherwise I would use that and you, you uh, advance it. I'll show that here in a minute. Instead of advancing it with a, a crank, there was a lever. And so you could lever the uh, form tool right up to the work, make that cut, and then back it off from the other direction and use the cutoff tool. And the cutoff tool would have been mounted uh, upside down in the back. So you wouldn't have had to use any cranks at all. Been much faster if you were making thousands of these. I gotta stop for a minute and talk about safety on these lathes. First of all, be careful when you're using any lathe for any operation. Wear your safety glasses and watch your fingers and, and follow all the other safety tips that I have given you. But can you see this work starting to whip around? And visualize a 12 foot length of that now, unsupported. But even if it's supported by a stand, and we were told to put a little rag on the end of it as a flag so nobody walked into it. And the larger stock probably isn't going to do this. But once this starts whipping, it gets more and more violent until all of a sudden in the thinner stock, it might bend at some point and then start whipping around. And it is absolutely lethal. And it is so scary and so noisy, you, you're afraid to approach the machine to even turn it off. And with larger stock, it becomes so out of balance that the entire machine, if not mounted to the floor, or vibrates and you're afraid that it'll tip over so it is a very real danger to have long stock especially at higher speeds as it starts to whip and, and rotating follow what I said now and I can't tell you how dangerous that is but virtually all turret lays that I have worked on had uh, air uh, advancement so the tube uh, the work went through a tube and it was fed with pressure at all times and then all you had to do was release the collet and it would advance into your stop. Well, that tube also prevented that from happening. So that made it much safer. And so if you see a 12-foot tube sticking out of the back of a lathe, you know, that is the bar feeder. Usually uh, air pressure bar feeder, I think, is the correct term. And I know what you're thinking there. I'm talking about safety and I don't have a guard. And that is an upcoming video. I hope to make a guard for that. And I've already made a guard for that road shaper that uh, you guys were looking at. Two guards, in fact. This is the lever or lever operated uh, cross slide that could be used for a production situation. And I'm not even sure what the front or the back is on this because I don't have the entire thing. But uh, if it was mounted in this position, the cutoff tool would be back here, upside down. Otherwise, you'd have to turn the lathe in reverse when you did that operation. And a tool block right here, uh, one like this, or like that uh, uh, turret tool block, block, the little end code that I showed you in the other shop. But if you turn this over, you'll see that there is no gib in there. The gib was lost at some point, and this was all wrapped in, in something when I got it. And it looks like it's in very good condition, but a gib would have to be made, plus the entire mechanism for uh, advancing it, which I believe to uh, be a, a lever type of thing like this, but there, I think, is a gear and a rack. Not positive on that, I'm just going by some of them that I remember seeing when I worked in different shops. So that will not be used, but it would be kind of neat if I was able to activate that and show you how it works.